Attribute number one, presence, part two. Meditation number two, benefits of the presence of God. The presence of God results not only in wonderful feelings, joy, peace, etc., but also in other kinds of blessings, such as safety, salvation, answered prayer, and the fullness of God. What is wonderful about this attribute? The nearness of God shelters and protects you from evil and harm. It's a place of safety, restoration, and salvation. Psalm 31, 20, In the shelter of your presence you hide them from the intrigues of men. In your dwelling you keep them safe from accusing tongues. Psalm 80, 19, Restore us, O Lord, God Almighty. Make your face shine upon us that we may be saved. When we pray for any kind of favor or blessing from God, it is when His presence is near that such prayers are answered. When His face is turned away, His presence withdrawn, then they are not. Psalm 24, 5, he will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God his Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Psalm 31, 16 and 17, let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. Let me not be put to shame, O Lord, for I have cried out to you. Psalm 44, 3 It was not by their sword that they won the land, nor did their arm bring them victory. It was the light of your face, for you loved them. This is what Paul was asking for when he prayed that Christ would dwell in our hearts. What effect would it have on your heart if you were to consciously experience God's presence today? experiencing this attribute. Learn to use all pleasure and all pain as vehicles to experience this attribute of God. To enjoy God's presence and all the benefits that come with it, one must, number one, be aware of His presence, and number two, believe that all good things are due to his presence and not any other factor. The reason your favorite activities and people sometimes bring joy to your soul and other times do not is that those activities and people are not the source of joy. If they were real sources of joy, they would always work. There would never be times when they failed to bring happiness. When your favorite activity makes you happy, the joy comes only because God granted you an illustration of what his nearness is like through that activity. So every time you experience any pleasure or joy, use that as a memory cue to remind yourself this is what it's like to experience God's presence. And whenever you experience any pain, frustration, boredom, or any other discomfort, let it remind you that the reason your soul is unhappy is that it is hungry and thirsty for the presence of God. In times like that, it seems as though relief from your suffering is what you really desire. But the truth is, mere relief is not enough to bring joy. Very often, relief comes and the frustration or despair remains. 
On the other hand, when you experience the joy that comes from the presence of God, you are happy even if the suffering persists. The worst torture ever invented, plus God's presence, would be infinitely better than the best pleasure of this world, minus his presence. Think. Take a moment to imagine the kind of anger, frustration, or sorrow you're most likely to encounter today. Now imagine yourself turning to God at that moment, seeking an experience of His presence, and being so delighted by that experience that it generates a joy that is greater than your sorrow. Do you believe God's presence has that effect? Promise to trust today. Psalm 24, 5 and 6. He will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God his Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, O God of Jacob.